A warm welcome to today's talk. It's Friday the 17th of December. Now, as we predicted um, a couple of weeks ago now, uh, Omicron is going around the world and we still believe we are all going to be exposed to it. Just to give you an example of that, the R value in the UK now is between three and five. So reproductive value of between three and five in the UK at the moment. This is escalating very steeply, still exponentially. Now, before we look at the UK and some other areas of the world to look at where we're going to go on this, let's just look at some orientation slides first of all. So um, here we have, uh, this is the new confirmed cases. So um, Japan, wonderful. Pandemic's gone away. Uh, New Zealand fairly low, Australia going up now. Now, I'm not fully up to date with the Omicron situation in Australia, but we do know that there is some now. So I'm afraid we can expect the Australian figures to go up. Um, Canada going up already. South Africa, quite a steep increase. But we know that the actual cases in South Africa are way higher than this. These are the officially reported diagnosed cases. The real number is real, much higher. We'll be getting a report from a doctor in South Africa in a minute. Um, United States still fairly high with Delta. No sign of the Omicron surge in the United States, but it will come. Germany, again, Omicron not really taken hold there, but some of the measures bringing Delta down a bit. Ireland and uh, the United Kingdom both uh, surging ahead, both uh, powered by Omicron. So um, that's the cases. Now, I just want to give a bit of orientation here to uh, Europe, Europe, Europe as a whole. Again, new, new di newly diagnosed cases or, or um, officially diagnosed cases rather. Denmark, Omicron surge, very high, very high number of cases in Denmark. Switzerland, next, United Kingdom, Norway, Ireland. So all of these high countries, these are all Omicron surges. Looks like Omicron starting to take hold in France as well. Germany, Spain, Portugal, United States, lower Omicron yet to take a, a grip in those countries. But remember, that's purely the number of uh, cases diagnosed. So here we see the official sort of Omicron figures. Now, these are probably about a, a, a week out of date now, the official figures. The, the, the real numbers are much higher than this in terms of Omicron in quite a few of these countries. But South Africa, we notice it's basically all Omicron now. Australia, well, we've got 11% there. Um, Canada, 9.6%. Japan, even though there's essentially no cases in Japan, some of them are Omicron. So I think that's fairly definitively we can say that we will start to see Japan featuring on that graph. Let's hope we don't get hospitalizations and deaths, but in terms of cases, the Omicron will be spreading around Japan the same as everywhere else. It's, it's inconceivable, really, that it won't. Um, but let's, let, 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 let's wait and see. We, this pandemic sometimes surprises us. Keep going to the wrong screen. There we go. Uh, United Kingdom, well, we know that the cases in the United Kingdom are, are much higher than that, at least 20, 30% now. Germany, Ireland, we know they're much higher than that. Um, New Zealand, I don't know. Um, so that's but that, that's roughly where we're at a week ago with uh, variants. Uh, weekly new hospital admissions per million. Now, this is interesting. So we do see an increase in hospitalizations in South Africa. We do see that. But as we've said, Omicron is everywhere in South Africa now. or virtually, Well, it's, it's, it's spreading there very, very rapidly still. Uh, Germany, Ireland, United Kingdom, South Africa, United States. Um, new hospital admissions remained fairly high in the United States. Largely the, largely the northern states at the moment driving that, but still pretty high overall. But South Africa encouragingly low. Uh, new daily confirmed deaths. So South Africa, and they do they, they they do register the deaths accurately in South Africa. Very low numbers of deaths, and we're getting on for four weeks into the Omicron surge now in South Africa, but still a very low number of deaths. So this is remarkably uh, reassuring so far. Um, Ireland, United Kingdom deaths slightly going down in the United Kingdom. United States, the deaths have stayed high. And uh, again, um, Delta driven deaths in Germany, relatively high, despite uh, exceptionally good healthcare facilities in Germany. Share of the population fully vaccinated well. I think we can see a clear group here of these countries and another grouping here of uh, 
well, group on its own, South Africa, and of course other African countries would be uh, below that. More discussion on that in a minute. It is quite relevant. So um, that's sort of orientation as to where we are at the moment. Now let's let's look at some detail now for the United Kingdom. Um, so as we said, the R value is three to five. Now this is what the case is yesterday. They're up here, up there. Don't know how well you can see that, but that, that that's the line up there. So there we are now. And of course, when the figures come out in about three hours' time, almost certainly we're going to be up here because the testing in the UK is still pretty good. Not doubling, but but going up fairly fairly sharply. It's not doubling every two or three days, but of course these are official these are official figures. The real number of infections we know is way way higher. So that is definitely going up, and it will be higher than it's ever been before in the entire pandemic in terms of cases. Now this is another interesting knock-on effect or problematic knock-on effect. St Guy's and Thomas's, St Thomas's Hospital Trust, one of the biggest trusts in London, 10% of the staff are currently off with, with COVID, mostly Omicron, having to self-isolate for 10 days, 10% of staff, and that's only going to go up. This is going to be a big problem. National grid, grocery stores, transport, hospitals, police, all of these depend on people being able to go to work. Uh, Chris Whitty, Chief Medical Officer, Omicron wave going to peak very quickly, his words, probably within just a, a week or two. So within, we actually, this, this, this pandemic's kind of coming to a head now. Within, within a week or two, we're going to know um, how many hospitalizations and deaths Omicron is going to bring about. I believe it's going to be remarkably low in vaccinated countries, but we, 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 wait, we wait for that. But what we do know is that people are going to develop massive amounts of immunity. So as I'm speaking now, all over the UK and Ireland, for example, where there's high levels of Omicron, there's a massive amount of immunity being developed as, as we speak. Could this signal the end of the pandemic? To all intents and purposes, that, 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 is, that is possible. We're coming to a head now, and, and, and I'm, I'm hopeful that it's not going to be expensive in terms of hospitalizations and deaths. Um, so infections in the UK doubling every two to three days, about 2.4 is probably the best estimate. NHS reduction in supply, that is a lot of the staff are off sick, and increase in demand all at the same time, and more records could be broken. So more people will need to go to hospital as more and more workers are off sick. So that is a problem. How is that going to pan out <clears throat> over the next few weeks? We really don't know yet. But Chris Weedy says more records will be broken. So let's just have a look at the uh, the official site for the UK. That is here. So I've put I've put the link to this, of course. Um, immense amount of information there: testing, cases, healthcare, vaccinations, um, data, all really readily available. And we see that huge increase. So that was the day before and that was yesterday and as I say that will be going much higher they're gonna to have to change the scale on the graphic pretty soon just have a look at the COVID symptoms study app here as well um, 88,000 new cases in the UK reporting symptomatic COVID but today the number of people actually getting Omicron must be at least quarter of a million at least that by now it was 200,000 two days ago so it could, it could be it could be going on for three four hundred thousand now and yet only eighty eight thousand projected to be symptomatic in the country so it looks like we are seeing quite a lot of people either incubating omicron who have not yet become symptomatic pre-symptomatic people or people that are indeed thankfully uh, asymptomatic and we do know that people that have been boosted for example have got about a 70 percent chance of being asymptomatic so that's really quite uh quite encouraging at the moment um so that that was daily cases. Uh, this is this is the prevalence, one point seven two million up there. London is a big concentration at the moment, as we'll see. And the uh, the prevalence here, symptomatic cases. Remember, um, still they've got a, it's got a way to go, but we are seeing a lot of asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic uh, Omicron infections. So that is, I, I'm I'm classifying that as good news at the moment. Um, now, Chris Whitty is saying that 
we've got Omicron as well as Delta at the moment. So what he's saying is number of Omicron infections is rising very fast, of course, very fast. But the Delta cases are flat. So what Chris Whitty, the chief medical officer, is saying here is that we actually have two pandemics at the moment. We have the Delta one, which is staying flat. And we have the Omicron one, which is exponentially uh, increasing. Now, this is not... This is not what we saw in South Africa. What we've seen in South Africa is Omicron replacing Delta. So I am confident that the Delta cases are going to go down as the Omicron cases increase over time. We're just not seeing it yet. And as the Omicron cases, which are causing minimal symptoms, we hope, go up, the Delta variant, which is causing nasty symptoms sometimes and hospitalisation goes down, I, I, I think that could be a hopeful combination. And I would hope that, that, that even though there's lots of Omicron cases, this is going to be balanced out in terms of hospitalisation, in terms of decreased Delta. But it's not happening yet. The data is shown that Delta is still with us, that we have two uh, pandemics at the same time. Delta is not going away, but being built on, according to the current data. But I, I do predict in the next few days that will change and the Omicron will start displacing the Delta as it did in South Africa. And that could have very good implications for hospitalizations and people getting sick. It really is, would be immensely surprising if it didn't displace it the same as it's done in South Africa. That would be immensely surprising. So I'm predicting that Delta is going to reduce pretty soon, uh, d d days to a week or two. Doubling, uh, if doubling time is every three days, I'm making that assumption, doubling time is every three days, Christmas, Eve, there'll be uh, another 462,000 cases in the day. That'll be 2 million people testing positive. And the people that test positive have to self-isolate for 10 days. So 2 million people, let's say a million of those are in the workforce. You don't need me to spell out how significant this is to the work, to the whole running of the logistics of the whole country. Um, and their contacts may also be symptomatic. Now, of course, the contacts will sometimes be tested, sometimes not be tested. But we're expecting testing capacity, big though it is, to be exceeded. So in the UK, there's going to be so many Omicron cases, testing capacity will be exceeded. Now, at the moment, we can do about 800,000 PCR tests a day. That, that's going to bunk up by about another 100, 150,000. But it still could be uh, exceeded because we could be going for a million new infections a day. Professor Andrew Hayward, SAGE member, outbreak spreading faster than tests can keep up. And uh, he's got a useful analogy here. If you think about getting a year's worth of rain in a month, then you're going to get flooded and potentially severe flooding. No matter how much you've <coughs> shored up your defences, he says. But um, what we could say is that the drainage has been improved, to extend the analogy, if Delta cases are going down because it's the Delta cases that are making people sick, we believe mostly. So as the Omicron displaces Delta, this could increase the drainage, even though the rainfall is going to be high, to use that analogy. Now, Professor David Spiegelholt, a very interesting statistician, he was the chair for the public understanding of risk, I think, for a while. I'm not sure if he still holds that, though. I'm sure he correct me if he's, uh, so someone knows. Um, but very interesting statistician, comes up with some fascinating stuff. Um, reduced socialisation will slow down the spread. So in other words, what he's saying is, is as more and more people become aware, aware of this, people will socialise less. And it's patient or people behaviour, of course, that's the main factor in perpetuating the whole issue. If this keeps doubling every two days, you get to 11 million on Christmas Day hmm. uh, and the entire country on New Year's Eve. So he's basically saying that's not feasible. Um, but I, I, probably not going to be long after that. Probably not going to be long after that because this is so contagious. So he says this is not sensible. But Professor Spiegelhalter does say millions of people are going to catch this over the next few weeks and months. Um, that that we know we, we we know that's going to happen. So no, no ambiguity. This is go this happening, as we've been predicting for some weeks. Uh, it could be considerably better than last winter. It could be worse. Um, not particularly helpful uh, there, but uh, <laughs> technically accurate. I'm hopeful it's going to be better. But of course, we don't know yet. Now, that was the Zoe symptom tracker data that we saw there, uh, which do, 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 do check this website out. All sorts of fascinating uh, news on it. And of course, do do fill it in for yourself. 
You know, news and research there, for example, always interesting things from Tim Spector's team to uh, to read up on. There we see Omicron and cold-like symptoms rapidly taking over in London. Wow. So, um, yeah, you have to you have to run fast to keep up with this pandemic. But I think we're getting the main points across now. Uh, going on to the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine prediction. And I think a lot of the government, the, the government haven't said this, but it seems a lot of the government's thinking and planning is based on this. And it is fairly, well, I think it's fairly pessimistic. So what, what, what they're saying here is, well, um, they're saying that here, here's the, this is the worst case scenario here in terms of uh, potential admissions based on immune evasion and vaccine effectiveness. So they're looking at over 6,000 admissions a day by into January. Um, that's their worst case uh, prediction. Um, their best case prediction is um, down here with hospitalizations peaking at a more, much more manageable 2,000 per day. Now this is leaving a heck of a lot of unknown ground in between that we simply don't know. And there's no reason why figures shouldn't be comparable for the United States and other areas. So that's the 16th of Jan. We're now on the 17th of December. So I guess we're about there. So um, it looks like we're not reaching the uh, the pessimistic scenario at the moment. But that's what a lot of the government planning seems to be on. But let's look at actual data. This is up to date in yesterday, of course. So this is people in hospital, which is there. So we see it's not going up at the moment. Um, United Kingdom. So th this is actually with a number on. So in hospital at the moment. 7,579, so 7,500 people uh, in hospital uh, at the moment with COVID. And just remember that number because that's going to be quite interesting and relevant in a minute. Now, London, there are more cases of COVID, uh, of uh, Omicron in, in London. London does seem to be leading the way, unfortunately, on this. Um, as we've just seen from Tim Spector's uh, tantalising article there that we'll have to read. Um, London in hospital data. So we do see that the London in hospital data has gone up somewhat. And this is going to be the key indicator for the UK. So we're going to know what's going to happen in the rest of the United Kingdom by what's happening in London. It's going to happen in London first. Is it already start happening in London or is that just a bit of a blip because it's that time of year anyway? We really don't know that yet, but we're going to keep an eye on that because that's going to be a useful indicator, just as South Africa is a useful indicator. Um, and here, here we have the numbers, 199 admissions on the 14th of December. The information for the 15th of December should be in in about three or four hours uh, time. Now, of course, it's really important that we follow what's going on in South Africa. So let's do that. And remember, there were seven and a half thousand people, we said, in hospital in the UK at the moment. Now, South Africa, where Omicron is now rampant, uh, we see that the hospitalizations in South Africa are the same. And the populations are similar. I mean, roughly the population in South Africa is 60 million. The population in the UK is about 66 million now, I think. So comparable populations. And, and as we speak now, the same number of people in hospital, despite the fact that South Africa is three weeks ahead of us in terms of Omicron development. So does this, does, does this mean that we'll have the same number of patients in hospital now in three weeks time? Well, if we follow the South Africa trend, that, that, could, that could well be what is, uh, what is happening. Um, intensive care 509, high care uh, 564, patients on the ordinary ward 6,541. So that's the South Africa situation uh, now. Uh, and this is the level of intervention that they're receiving in South Africa. So um, currently ventilated 195 for the whole country, remember. And those, those requiring oxygen have gone up to nearly 1,300. So still a relatively small proportion of the entire population of South Africa. That's, that's, that's the proportion of 60 million people who are both in hospital and testing positive for COVID and being oxygenated, but some of those are being oxygenated or a good proportion of those are being oxygenated for reasons other than COVID as the primary pathology. So 
I think this puts it in optimistic in an optimistic context. I would I would hope. So South Africa now. This is directly from a doctor in South Africa this morning. Um, I don't know if I can use his name or not. I'll have to ask him that, so I won't use it for now. Um, so what we see in South Africa, cases are rising steeply in all provinces now. Now, how tang they seem to have levelled off or be going down a little bit, but in all the other provinces, they are scooting up. Um, cases in the fourth wave are higher than previous peaks in all previous waves. So this is the highest number of new infections in South Africa ever in the entire pandemic of new infections. But as we saw, hospitalizations currently seven and a half thousand relatively low hospitalizations and deaths are not currently following this trend and remember this is from a doctor in south africa are still relatively low most admissions to hospital are still for unvaccinated people that's interesting mostly still unvaccinated people in hospital pfizer boosters have been approved and can be given six months after full vaccination and the first of those will go through in december so it'll be six months for the first people in december not cutting it to three months as we have done in the United Kingdom. And uh, we see the data for South Africa here. It's all there available, at least it would if the when they update the website. But trust me, I did get that <laughs> to get my data directly from the website when it was fully uh, working. So that is uh, information from the, uh, the, the those numbers from the Department of Health in South Africa. But interesting to see that perspective from a doctor on the ground in South Africa. Now, Black Dog writes in this, um, I'm living in South Africa. The mass of our popula population live in townships are and are unvaccinated. So the majority are unvaccinated, and especially in the townships. Uh, there is no mask of any social distancing ever since the pandemic started. So many people in the townships have basically not been following a lot of regulations, although there were compulsory lockdowns at the early stage. The elephant in the room has been ignored. We're only 25 to we'll have to wait and see what the elephant is. We're only 25 to 30 percent fully vaccinated. True, very low vaccination, full vaccination rates. 16 seater minibus taxis commuting the masses of people daily. No masks, social distancing. 16 people all crammed in a minibus. Guaranteed spread. Hospitalizations and deaths are lower than a year ago during their earlier beta wave. I think it was a year ago in pandemic. Natural immunity, this is the elephant in the room, natural immunity needs to come back to the discussion and needs to stop being downplayed and disregarded by the mainstream media, is a black dog's opinion, um, which is an interesting view. And uh, in South Africa seems to have some merit, to be fair. South Africa, mostly, 72% I think of people have uh, natural antibodies to the infection. So high level of natural immunity in South Africa. But that professor from South Africa yesterday clearly saying that previous infection is protective against severe disease in Omicron. Clearly saying that vaccination is protective against severe disease in Omicron. So both conferring good levels of protection. That's why I remain optimistic about the UK and indeed the United States, although the vaccination rates in the States are slightly lower than the UK. Um, as we've seen, Omicron is going through Ireland despite the high vaccination rates because people can catch it. Just hopefully not many get sick. Uh, globally, <coughs> World Health Organization, um, Omicron is spreading across the global, global and unprecedented rate, of course, WHO. Uh, Dr. Ted Ross, <coughs> surely we've learned by now that we underestimate this virus at our peril. OK, fair enough. Even if Omicron does cause less severe disease... The sheer number of cases could once again overwhelm unprepared health systems. So we still don't know for sure. Now, just to finish today. Um, oh, that's good. It looks like uh, the UK government's responded to the vitamin D deficiency. So we know that huge numbers of people uh, in the UK are uh, deficient in vitamin D. And it looks like the government's responded. So let's see what the government have said on this now. Uh, free vitamin D supplements for people at high risk from coronavirus 19. Oh, service closed. Oh, OK. Right. Fair enough. So the government response during a period of massively escalating Omicron is to um, close the service for free vitamin D, despite the fact that we know that people that are low on vitamin D are immunocompromised. 
If you understand that, do let me know, because I sure as heck don't. It is quite inexplicable. Quite inexplicable. There you go. That's the response of the, uh, the UK government. Answers in the comments. If you understand that one, please. If you're from the government, let me know, because I don't understand it. And I, I don't think any people watching this understand it. Government, so please do uh, inform us. Please do inform us. OK, so there we go. Cases massively escalating. You are going to be exposed to Omicron. Um, virtually, if you're watching this video, I think it's fair to say you're going to be exposed to Omicron at some point in the next days, weeks or month or two. Have your immune system as optimised as you can. And thank you for watching.